Prophet وسلم, of the signs of prophethood was the prophecies that the Prophet وسلم, made. Of the prophecies he made, a segment is prophecies of the end of time. Meaning, signs, alamat, that when these things happen, note that the hour is nigh, the hour is near. Why? For a few reasons. Um, probably the most prominent of the reasons is so that the akhirah, the life to come, is always at the forefront of the Muslim's head. So any time you become ghafil, you forget um, and you go into the affairs of the dunya and a sign comes, you go, oh, akhirah. You know, like when you're traveling from here, I don't know your country too well, but just from here to Birmingham, um, along the way you kind of um, get, you know, you do, uh, not doze off, but you kind of get into your own world. Then a sign comes up, you know, 50 miles to Birmingham or whatever. The, it, it's to wake you up again so you don't miss the ex- exits, you don't miss the lanes and so on and so forth. So one of its key Reasons I won't go through all of it because that's not my topic. Um, is is for that. So tonight, inshallah Taala, we will touch on whatever signs Allah Rabbul Azza uh, allows us time wise to touch on in a chronological sequence. So I'll start with the first one, and the reason I'm doing this is a few. One is I know Sheikh Murtaza is doing uh, the Dajjal with you guys on on Sunday. Sheikh Nasahih, yeah. So. That's one of the major signs, but I'm starting from the first of the signs. So the first sign, the Prophet, and I'll draw some lessons from it, inshallah. So the first of the signs um, is the hadith of the Prophet, وسلم, he says, Bu'ithtu ana wasa'atu kahatain. I as in my advent, my prophethood, my coming, and the hour are like this. Meaning that the advent of the prophet was a sign of the signs of the day of judgment. Uh, can I get a bit technical with you? So when the Prasul says this, kahatain, the scholars went into what does it mean? Automatically, any human can deduce that it means proximity, like next to one another. Yeah? And you would be right to ask, but Ustaz, 14 and a half centuries ago, he said like this, and 14 and a half centuries have passed, and what this? You know, kahatain. So, the Ahl al-Ilm explained that so far as... uh, the chain of prophethoods are concerned. So, you know, Adam and Nuh and on and on and on to our prophet, the Rasul came, no more prophets will come, straight away uh, Qiyamah will come. You with me? So there's not three steps, there's another prophet, and it's me and then Qiyamah. One. Second is they say in reference to the gap in the middle, like as in proximity this way, next to it, um, if you look at geological time, like as in the time the earth has existed and the sun has existed, um, and, uh, you know, uh, compared to that, 14 and a half centuries or more or less is, is is a blink of an eye. An hour day today, long time. But so far as the time of the world is concerned, and we have a hadith, the Prophet ﷺ was with the Ashab, the sun was setting. You know when the sun goes after Asr, so the sun's climbing, then it reaches the Zawal, and then it comes down. There comes a section where it's just dropping. You know, there's no more slow, it's just a drop. So this after Asr, before Maghrib, you know, with, with so around the sun is there. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and, and Rasul is a teacher alayhi afdalu salatu wa tammu taslim. He tells the sahaba, he says, 
compared to what is past and what is left of the world is tantamount to what is left of this day. As in most of it done, so if they say the sun is four and a half billion years old, um, most of it's done, the last drop is left. So a tafsir is this. The other is the scholars say because you need to understand that your heritage, your deen, comes from a lot of thought and analysis. So if the Rasul did this, people sat and said, hold on, what did he mean? You know, and, and for most of us up to this date, you said this, okay, it means close. But the Ahl al-Ilm sat and, and then they said, no, he meant this gap. Not, are you guys following me? Um, so he meant this gap as in between this finger and this finger. With different intents showing uh, magnitude, um, size of, of event. Meaning me, then the big event, Qiyama. You, you understand? So Kahatain, the advent of the Rasul, Huge event. Then Qiyamat, next one up. Or that the gap between these two in reference to time, like that much more in Qiyamat. Irrespective, the advent of the Rasul was the sign of the signs of the Day of Judgment. So that's our first one. The second sign happened in the lifetime of the Prophet Sallallahu So it is a full moon night. And full moon nights, you see, because we live in an age of, popul uh, of uh, massive population, with it massive pollution. So we have noise pollution, we have dirt pollution, we have, and we have light pollution. So with light, you go out, you look up, you can't see the stars. Have you UK people seen stars before? <laughs> so in our part, Habibi, don't look upset. If you've seen it, you've seen it. You know, not a big deal. So in our part, pollution is low. And because Australia is very big land, very small population. We're a continent and only 25 million people. Um, so when you drive out a bit into the bush and there's no lights, you see the stars like that. Like it's an amazing, amazing uh, observation. But there's no other light. There's no city. It's just, it's dark and then these lights. And then on a full moon night, it's glorious. So in the time of the Rasul, you can deduce that the full moon night was a, a picnic night. You know, Arabs, Allah bless them, Ya Rab, they are people that try to make the best of, of situations. Like I just came from Mecca. Uh, again, I'm from Australia, context very different. So we have parks and we have uh, this and that. Uh, I saw people on the side of the road next to a mountain. They've sat down, they've put their, uh, their little picnic thing uh, and they're sitting. I says, so I asked the taxi driver, what are they doing? He goes, uh, oh, picnic, sayaha, you know. I said, Allah bless it for them. So they used to look for. So a full moon night was a great excuse to get together. So they used to come outside, haram is there, and their little circles they used to sit, tribes used to sit talk, laughter, drink. So full moon night and the Rasul walks out. The Quraysh are gathered in their circles, in their picnic place, if you call it that. So then they notice, I, I, am, I am explaining the hadith, this is not the matn of the hadith, yeah, I don't, uh, because you have to make people understand. 
So they see the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam coming and they come up to him because the Rasul is the talk of the city. Like every house, it's what Muhammad has brought. And this son has become a Muslim and the father hasn't. And in this house, the father has become a Muslim. And the slave of this, it's, it's the talk of town. So now they see him come. So some gather around him. If you claim to be the prophet of God, then ask, so what's the, what's the big thing? The moon. Ask your Lord to split this and then join it back together and we'll believe. We'll accept you're a prophet. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam prayed, asked Allah Rabbul Izza, Allah Rabbul Izza granted him uh, the miracle and he Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam pointed to the moon and Makkah is watching this is not a small event you know Makkah is watching everyone's come because the man's on the spot what do you do and imagine he does this and nothing happens and you know goes again what they're watching they're waiting anticipating hoping for failure because done and then alayhi afdalu salatu wa tammu taslim points and brings it this way some of the narrations say one on this side of a mountain and one on this side of a mountain and other narrations say brought one towards one mountain and one towards another mountain both can be joined together Makkah is very mountainous probably over one mountain near another mountain ala kulli hal the Quran said iqtarabati sa'atu al qamar the hour has come nigh and the moon split meaning this is a sign, no doubt about it, in the presence of the Rasul. The Prophet is alive, the Sahaba are alive, Mecca is there. Verse confirms it as a sign. Therefore, this is the second of our signs of the day. By ours, I mean of this gathering um, that I am taking, uh, of the signs of the day of judgment. You still with me? Should I go on or are we good? Allah protect you, Ya Rabbi. So, um, and then to point something important out, now they see it, now what? Huh? So they go, nah, he did magic on us. You see, it's a point that miracles are not a cause of belief. Do you understand me? And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam hasn't entertained a lot of show us, give us signs, give us signs. Because when you ask for signs, you increase the doubt in your heart. Because they saw, but they didn't believe. Iman requires that you get a certain degree of evidence. Then you make the leap of faith that you believe in everything unseen. You with me? Habibi, I don't want to make people uncomfortable, but is the temperature okay or too hot? Yeah, I have a rosacea problem, my face burns, so. Allah bless you. And they're all wrapped up enough, so they, they should be fine. Allah honor you, Ya Rabb. So, we'll move to our next one. Um, where's Haddad? All right. No, just time-wise. So, next one, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam prophesizes. This prophecy happened in the Battle of Tabuk. So Tabuk is the last of the campaigns of the Prophet Wasallam, And very difficult campaign. And he Wasallam marched out in the thick of summer. Can I ask a question? Anyone been in the summer of Mecca? Uh, in, in the summer of Saudi? Uh, different, separate ball game. Separate ball game. I was in Umrah in summer. 
and I wanted to kiss the stone, the Hajar al-Aswad. So there were some people in it, uh, near it at Fajr time, so I figured, خلاص, I'll come at Zuhur, no one will be here. So I came at Zuhur, and I was wearing my, my scarf and um, coming out of the hotel under cover area because the mosque, you know, the haram has all, you know, before this uh, current situation. And um, as I got out from under the cover, because I wanted to go and kiss the stone, and pff, like as though someone's got a hairdryer on high in front of your face, you know. So I took three steps, then ran back. I said, no, I'll come back at Asr for this Hot, hot. Um, you guys won't appreciate it because heat doesn't come to London, you know, so gentle relatively for you. But the desert, hot. So thick off the heat. He, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, marched. Um, all the way to the precipice of Bilad al-Sham. And then waited there and then came back. This campaign is called Tabuk. So Auf ibn Malik says that I came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam fi ghazwati Tabuk wa huwa fi qubbatim min adam I came to him in the campaign of Tabuk and he was in a tent made of leather. So Auf Ibn Malik came in in one of the narrations. He says, can I come in? So the Rasul said, come in. So then Auf said, all of me? So the Rasul said, all of you. And this, this delicate little moment shows the relationship of the Rasul with the companions. When Auf says, all of me, it's a joke. In the middle of the, all the difficulty, you know, with the Rasul of Allah, but they had this uh, relationship and proximity and joy and happiness uh, that he says this, so he came. And then the Rasul, remember, the, where, where's the campaign? You, you have to engage with me, dear ones. Where's the campaign? Tabuk. Tabuk. So in Tabuk, the Rasul makes the following prophecy. He says, أُعْدُدْ سِتَّمْ بَيْنَ يَدَيِ السَّاعَةِ Count, watch, look out for these six things between now and the hour. As in, I'm giving you six signs, Ya Auf. And amazing that he gives it in Tabuk, because the signs, all of it, link around Tabuk. You see, when you want someone to memorize something, remember something, you link it to something. Successful memory techniques. So you link this name with this place, or you link this with that. that. So the Prophet ﷺ mentioned Tabuk. Like in Tabuk, mention this, and predominantly it will, it will unfold in the same area. So the first of the signs, he said, Mauti, my death. So his advent is a sign. His death is a sign of the signs of the day of judgment. And the Prophet wasallam passed away on the 11th year after Hijrah, on the 12th of Rabi'ul Awwal. On the 12th of Rabi'ul Awwal. So, and the hardest, saddest moment in human history, let alone Islamic history, is the demise of the Rasul. Alayhi afdalu salatu wa tammu taslim. Me and you, in our days we hear about it, it, it touches the hearts. They actually saw the Prophet and then they had to bury him. Uh, Fatima radiallahu anha asks Anas, he goes, how were, you so, how were you able to bear throwing sand on the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? أَطَابَتْ أَنفُسُكُمْ أَنْ تَحْتُ التُّرَابَ عَلَى رَسُولِ اللَّهِ So he said, our, our, our so hearts couldn't bear it, but the amr of the Rasul had to be obeyed. So 
hard moment and the Sahaba were bewildered to the point that they couldn't accept so you know the famous story Umar ibn al-Khattab um, came out with his sword whoever says that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam has died I will cut off his head you munafiks the Prophet hasn't died the Prophet went as Musa went and he will come back because the heart can't accept and other Sahaba fell to the ground and hard point and how do you recover think about it the leader the institutor the founder the legislator the commander the strategist the link between heaven and earth has gone how do you recover like how do you continue where do you get the motivation from and here uh, Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiyallahu anhu comes out with his timeless utterance. Man kana ya'budu Muhammadan fa inna Muhammadan qad mat. Wa man kana ya'budu Allah fa inna Allah hayyu la yamut. And who, whoever worshipped Muhammad, Muhammad has died. And whoever worshipped Allah, then Allah Rabbul Izzah is eternal and doesn't die. And then he recites, وَمَا مُحَمَّدٌ إِلَّا رَسُولٌ قَدْ خَلَتْ مِنْ قَبْلِهِ الرُّسُلُ أَفَإِنْ مَاتَ أَوْ قُتِلًا قَلَبْتُمْ عَلَىٰ أَعْقَابِكُمْ وَمَنْ يَنْقَلِبْ عَلَىٰ عَقِبَيْهِ فَلَنْ يَضُرُّ اللَّهَ شَيْئًا Muhammad was not but a prophet. Prophets have died before him. If he were to have died or is no more, then would you turn on your heels and leave the mission and leave the deen? And Umar said, and Umar, 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 radiallahu an Umar. So he says, Yeah, Abu Bakr, this is in the Quran. Like Abu Bakr came to the pulpit and mentioned this. And Umar says, It was as though like they have heard it. The verses are part of the Quran, they have recited it, but they never made the link that he would die. You know, so they kept it so far buried and they, they, no, he will, you understand me? That wouldn't even cross their minds. So when he heard it, he fell down. And then Abu Bakr said, yes, and Allah says, إِنَّكَ مَيِّتُونَ وَإِنَّهُمْ مَيِّتُونَ O Muhammad, you will die and they will die. But an important point, the verse Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu references is a lesson for us and for all the Muslims that difficulties will come, setbacks will come, pain will come, heartache will come, death will come as a matter of course. But none of those should ever affect or deter or hold back the da'wah. Remember dear ones. So from it we learn that we are a people who live for a mission. So make yourselves and your families people that live for the mission that the Prophet ﷺ lived for. Because notice, whilst he was alive, the deen was in the jazeera. The deen was in the jazeera. After his death, within a short few decades, it reached Granada and Spain on one side and New Delhi and India on the other. How did it reach? Because lots of movements, lots of religions, lots of ideas came and went into the dustbins of history because the followers didn't take, up on, take the mission up. But as he fell, as the prophet passed away, straight away Abu Bakr commands the Jaysh of Osama radiallahu an, go complete your mission. Because mission focused people, uh, they lived for a purpose, live for a purpose dear ones. All other stuff has no meaning. Like wallahi al-azim. They are doing so much to make the world about money. You know, wear a Rolex watch. Drive a Bugatti. You understand? Look, 
posh. Ask the person, like if he's honest to himself, after putting on that fancy watch, what changed? Heart, same heart. Sadness, same sadness. Problem, same problem. Weather, same weather. You went and nothing wrong, Habib, if you have it, Allah blesses God. I don't want the person with Rolex here saying, you know, that's what did you do? Point. They're trying to make us live for material things, which does nothing. And after you've got it, you think, why? You know, all for fame. And after you become famous, you think, what a musibah. Before I could have coffee by myself, now I have coffee and I have to look, see who's taking a picture. You understand? Whatever they think the hal is, whatever they're aspiring, so empty, so hollow, so nothing. If there was any khair in it, the Rasul would have done it. Like the hadith says, if the dunya had the weight of the wing of a fly or mosquito, Allah wouldn't have given it to, to the people that don't believe in Him. Nothing to Him. Point, dear ones, what is grand, what is expensive, what, what will add value to your life, what will give meaning to your existence, what will make your life better lives is when you live lives of purpose. Dear ones, live lives of purpose so that in salati wa nusuki wa mahyaya wa mamati lillah everything that I do is for Allah Rabbi. that's a good life and they had no regret watch every sahabi watch every sahabi none of them came to a point and think ah, I wish you know we did all this for nothing we shouldn't have done all this confused bewildered um, should it, shouldn't until the end until they they went under the ground lives of a hundred percent meaning Lives of a hundred percent devotion. The Akhirah was a reality to them. It was a reality to them. Bilal radiallahu anhu at the point of death, his wife says, um, you know, oh, what calamity, what sadness, my husband's dying. Uh, I will be a widow. The companion of the Rasul is going. Look at Bilal at the point of death. He says, غَدًا نَلْقَ الْأَحِبَّةِ مُحَمَّدًا وَصُحْبَةِ Tomorrow, just tomorrow, just, just tomorrow we will be with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, with the beloved, the Prophet and the companions. Alhamdulillah that this part finished, I'm going to the real one, you know. Do you see? Clarity till the end, conviction to the end, devotion till the end, purpose to the end, life to the end. And go watch others die. Go watch others die, watch the confusion, watch the eyes moving from side to side, watch the fear, watch the anxiety, watch the gripping onto the world that they built whole hospitals to keep them here. And with hospitals and, uh, you know, a, a special units and everything Allah Rabbul Izzah calls and you go and through the same hospital you designed to keep you here. Through that, Allah takes you. You go and, the, and monarchs go to the real monarch because the real world is just the world that Allah Rabbul Izzah has for us on the other side. This one is a fleeting moment, fleeting moment. Focus, dear ones, on the next one. Don't don't sell that one for this one.